While many people are aware of the environmental issues that exist, not many people realize how environmental issues are tied to poverty and vice versa. The notion of environmental injustice is not a new one, but is one that is gaining more and more attention both in the U.S. and internationally. Authors and researchers Mohai and Bryant define environmental injustice as the prevailing assumption that in this country, pollution is a problem faced equally by everyone in society. However, that assumption has been increasingly challenged as greater attention has been given by the media, social scientists, legal scholars, and policymakers to the issues of environmental injustice. And with this understanding of environmental injustice, we can begin to take a look at how it exists in our world today. Perhaps the most nationally recognized example of environmental injustice is the issues that exist in Africa. A study conducted in 2004, shown in figure one below, published in 2006, shows that as of 2004, only 56% of people in sub-Saharan African countries had access to clean and drinkable water. It is clear from this graph that areas of Africa are the ones hit the hardest by issues of not being able to gain access to clean water. This is linked to the intense poverty that exists in these regions. In the first half of this graph, it shows that the percentage of people of this country that are able to access drinking water. And the second half of the map shows what percentage of people of that country have access to clean drinking water. Figure 2 shows that nearly all African countries have access to water 50% of the time or less. And of the water they have access to, less than 50% of that is actually safe to drink. While there is still much work to be done, some of the leading organizations trying to help directly or provide information about the crises are the World Health Organization, the Water Project Foundation, and the African Renewal Program. The second focus of this environmental injustice is perhaps the less recognized of the two, the issues that exist in the United States. Some of the issues of environmental injustice become the most prominent in the U.S. in times of natural disasters. Most notably and recently is the tragedy of Hurricane Katrina. The organization, the Leadership Conference, says, Hurricane Katrina exposed the shocking extent to which poverty and income disparities exist in our country. For many Americans, the tragedy made visible the unfinished struggle to achieve racial, racial equality and economic justice, appalled at the government's inability to respond in a timely and competent manner to the evacuation needs of those affected by the hurricane. Americans from across racial, economic, and political spectrum saw Katrina and its devastation as an opportunity not only to examine what went wrong, but also how to take preventative measures. Other prevailing issues we see in the United States are the issues that exist when it comes to waste disposal. Many towns and cities that are labeled impoverished are most often the places where waste is disposed of. <coughs> Author Robert Bullard says that a study revealed that three out of four of the off-site commercial hazardous waste landfills in Region 4, which comprises of eight southern states in the U.S., were located in predominantly African-American communities, although African-Americans made up of only 20% of the region's population. Because of the large number of impoverished communities in the South, these are often the sites of waste disposal. I think it's fair to say that simply because someone is impoverished does not mean that he or she should be subjected to the ensuing consequences of harmful waste or toxins dumped into the area that they live. In both the U.S. and worldwide, environmental injustice is an ongoing issue, and one that will take much more effort to fully remedy. While there are countless organizations set up to help those in Africa in need of clean water, as well as organizations in the U.S. to help in natural disasters, the sad truth is it is simply not enough. I think that in order to start the process of remedying these issues is to start with radical policy reform. These reforms need to happen both in the U.S. and internationally. While nonprofit organizations are obviously a good way to start, they simply do not have the funds or the manpower to fix all these problems on their own. There will need to be reform on a much larger scale in order for these issues to be truly fixed and to consider the world a truly environmentally just place.